in Java, our most basic data structure is the array, which allows us to store sequences of like typed information and access them through a single location in memory. Sometimes, however, arrays are unwieldy and we want to use more strongly organized data structures so that they can be easier for humans to understand and write programs around. Oftentimes, what's appropriate here is a multi-dimensional array. Multi-dimensional array is a pretty scary sounding name, but in fact the concept behind them is very basic. The idea is, what happens if we create an array of arrays? The line of code at the top of this screen shows the syntax to do just that. This line of code will create a two-dimensional, multi-dimensional array. You'll see it's very like the syntax for simply creating an array of characters under normal circumstances. But in every instance where we reference the array nature of the variable, Java is now going to need two pieces of information. This line of code will tell Java to create three arrays, each of which has enough space to store seven characters, or three arrays of length seven. To cement our understanding of this concept, let's write a Java program that utilizes two-dimensional arrays. While we can use multi-dimensional arrays to store information in abstract manners, it will probably be easier, easiest for us to learn them by representing an actual two-dimensional object with our two-dimensional array. In this case, the chessboard. The classical chessboard is divided into black and white squares. It's eight squares in width and eight squares in height. And the program we're about to write will store in Java a virtual board with the squares correctly labeled black and white. And then at the end, we'll have it print this board out to us so that we can see we wrote our program correctly. Let's begin by simply declaring and initializing the array we're going to be using. We'll use an array of characters for this task, giving the white squares the character value of capital W and the black squares the character value of capital B. Since a chessboard is an 8x8 eight eight grid, we're going to want to declare a two-dimensional array of eight arrays, each of which contains eight characters. Now, in order to assign our squares their proper values, we're going to need to loop through this array to get to each individual node and give it the value we want it to have. For loops and arrays get along great because arrays always know how long they are. But a single for loop doesn't allow us to meaningfully loop through our two-dimensional array. A for loop really just goes in one direction. And our two-dimensional arrays have two. To solve this, we're going to make use of nested for loops, or a for loop within a for loop. Our outer for loop will loop through each array in turn, while our inner for loop's job will be to loop through the nodes that those arrays contain. Common practice when creating for loops is to use an integer variable i for your initial for loop, and then j, k, and so on for subsequent for loops. However, because we're creating a chessboard, which is an actual object, I'm going to choose the value y for our outer loop because what this loop is doing is iterating down the y-axis of our chessboard. As I mentioned, for loops and arrays get along great because arrays know how long they are. We could simply state that we would like this loop to run eight times, which is the result of this statement here. But that's not good dynamic programming. 
because if someone was to go along and change the size of our chessboard, our program would now break. And we can write this loop such that it will work for a chessboard of any size. To do this, rather than explicitly saying our loop here should run eight times, we should have it start by asking our array how long it is. To ask an array their length, we go array.length, and that returns an integer value. This is a two-dimensional array, so simply calling the name of the array and then dot length will get us the length of the array.